Hello and welcome to this first in a two-part series of videos on pairs trading. Now pairs trading, I'd say, is an intermediate level strategy, but if you are a beginner, don't worry, the concepts involved are actually pretty simple and you might find it useful to learn about this trading strategy. In this first video, we'll introduce the general concepts of pairs trading, exploring the idea of a market neutral strategy. We'll explain what that means and look at some of the assumptions involved. And we'll also look at a general example of an equities pairs trade. So do keep watching to the end of the video so that you get to hear about all these different aspects. In the second video, we'll move on to more specific examples, looking at finding a potentially suitable equity uh, pair to trade, things like position sizing. Hello, I'm Peter Martin with Trading212, and we add educational videos about trading to YouTube regularly. If you haven't already, make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel so that you get to know whenever we've uploaded a new video. Well, in a nutshell, pairs trading is finding a correlated pair of instruments where the uh, valuation relationship between the two has got out of whack, and then buying the underpriced one and selling the overpriced one. And the aim is to try and make a profit irrespective of fluctuations in the wider market. So let's try and explore some of these ideas with an introductory hypothetical example using house prices. So for this hypothetical example, consider these are all houses on the same street. Now, there are a lot more houses on the street, but just for the purposes of keeping things nice and easy and simple, let's say all of these are sold a number of times at roughly the same time. And let's say these are the prices in 2008. And a few years go by, and let's say these are the prices in 2011. So they've all increased in value by different amounts, but then again, they started at different amounts. And if you were to work through these increases, you might notice that they've all increased by roughly 8%. And that might not be too surprising. They're all on the same street after all, and we might expect them all to be exposed to the same market forces. And let's say, in fact, you go back and look through the land registry sale prices and notice that over the past decades, they've all tended to experience a similar percentage change in value. Now let's fast forward all the way to 2018. And let's say these are now the values in 2018. Now, these three have all increased by roughly the same amount, which is about 30%. But this one here hasn't increased by the same amount. It's only increased by about 15%. And this one here, we might notice a bit out of line as well. This one's increased by 36%. So you might think there's something wrong with this one here. And so let's say you get a surveyor in and he finds nothing wrong and you do a few more checks and eventually finding nothing wrong, you conclude that it's simply a mispricing. This house is undervalued. So if you had the money available, you might buy this house, hoping that its value would move back in line with the others in time and increase a bit faster than the others as time goes on. The trouble is, this exposes you in a big way to the housing market, and you might not want to be exposed in that way. What would be nice is if you could somehow sell this overpriced house at the same time, so that overall you weren't exposed to the vagaries of the housing market. So if you could somehow go long this house and go short this one, then if the market goes up, or down, the changes in value might broadly offset each other. So in that example, hypothetical as it was, we had two core ideas. The first, the idea of dealing up and down on two related prices simultaneously and bundling it up conceptually as being one strategy. And the second idea, the idea of trying to avoid exposure to general fluctuations in the market as a whole. So let's explore the first of these in a bit more detail, first of all. So in that previous example, we were focusing on two houses, and here are the same two houses, and with the same price data that we looked at before. 
Now in that previous example, we were considering the percentage increase in these prices each time. But another way of looking at this is to look at the ratio between the two prices. So here we have the ratio comparing the more expensive of the two to the cheaper one. And we can see that that ratio was constant for the first two sets of data, which was 2008, 2011. Once we got to 2018 though, the prices had moved away from the historical ratio and it's actually 1.18. So that ratio is larger than we'd expect based on the historical relationship between the two. And so our trade consisted of two parts. And we traded in the direction that we would expect the ratio to move. So selling the more expensive one and buying the cheaper one. Now, of course, with houses, we can't easily go short the market, but with share prices, we can. So with our equities pairs trade, our strategy will consist of dealing in two different shares. And just as with our hypothetical house example with houses on the same street, when it comes to shares, we'd want to choose two companies that were exposed to the same market forces. So companies that operate in similar fields and that had shown a tendency historically to trade frequently in one ratio or in uh, within a certain range of ratios. Now we'll look in a bit more detail in the second video at finding similar companies, but let's just say that we have company A and company B, and that they have shown a correlation over the years of trading in a ratio consistently around 0.5. And this is with company B, its shares being having twice the price of share A. So this ratio of 0.5. Now, if that ratio moves to 0.7, let's say, then we might expect that at some point in the future that, that ratio would move back to 0.5 given the historical relationship. And so what we might choose to do is to sell share A and buy share B. Or let's say that that ratio moves down to 0.3. We might at that point consider this is uh, lower than what we might expect from the historical relationship. And at that point, we might choose to buy share A and sell share B. And the two trades together would be our pairs trade. And we said there was a second concept of trying to avoid exposure to price fluctuations of the overall market. Now, this is what we call trying to be market neutral. So let's talk a little bit more about this. So a market neutral strategy seeks to avoid market risk. If I go long the stock market, then I profit when prices rise, but my risk is that the market may fall. If I go short the stock market, then I profit when prices fall, but my risk is the market rising. Now let's say I close my positions out or I hedge all my positions perfectly, then I'm market neutral. I don't care whether the market goes up or goes down. However, if I'm closing all my positions out, I can't make a profit. Now, a market neutral strategy aims to make a profit, but the profitability of the strategy does not depend on the market rising or falling. So when it comes to an equity trading strategy like pairs trading, it's an ideal that we're chasing. So ideally, it's independent of market performance. So we're aiming to be market neutral, but we may not be able to perfectly achieve that. Let's say we ended up buying company B and selling company A. Now we aren't actually looking for B to go up and A to go down. Let's say that the stock market as a whole declines as we have here, and that both A and B go down with it. Now if our exposure to both shares is equal and they decrease by a similar percentage, then roughly what we make with our shorts here should offset what we lose with our long position in B here. And what we are hoping for though, is that proportionally company B is going to outperform company A over time. So a market neutral strategy like pairs trading doesn't hinge on whether the market goes up or goes down, it seeks to profit no matter what happens in terms of the market movements. Does this mean that there's no risks involved, that it can't go wrong? No, of course not. 
whenever we trade, there are risks involved. A market neutral strategy seeks to mitigate one of the key risks that's often associated with trading, which is what we call systematic risk, which is really just a way of saying prices can go up as well as down, and we don't know where, which way the market is going to go. But there are other risks involved, and the strategy involves a number of assumptions holding. So let's look at these assumptions and some of the other risks that are involved. The main assumption is that the correlation that we've observed in the past will continue to hold in the future. And the whole strategy hinges on the assumption that divergences in the ratio away from the long-term average will revert to the mean in time. Now, that really is our key risk. If the correlation breaks down between the two, then we have to be ready to cut our position. Now, we said that the strategy aims to avoid market risk, but there are, of course, other risks uh, play. Do check out my video on risks of trading for more on this, but we have things like counterparty risk and liquidity risk. We wouldn't want to be entering in a pairs trade where one or both of the pairs are illiquid. And this final point here is worth bearing in mind. If you're long one company and short another, if something catastrophic happens to the one that you're long of, let's say it collapses or goes into receivership, then you're going to be in trouble. Now, that's really an extreme example of a breakdown in the correlation between the two pairs. Well, I hope you enjoyed this introduction to pairs trading. If you did, please just spare a second to tap or to click on the thumbs up button and give us a like. Or why not let us know what you think about pairs trading? Is it something you want to try? Is it something you tried before? Drop us a line in the comments section. We do read each one. And don't forget to keep an eye out for the second part where we're going to look at a more specific example of an equities pairs trade. Well, that's all for now from me, Peter Martin and Trading212. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time. Goodbye.